Today I'm bringing you an answer for a question that some of you may actually have asked yourselves along the time. Are Intel Arc GPUs perform better with Intel CPUs? Will the driver issues that they have in terms of CPU overhead be fixed by using an Intel plus Intel combo? That's what I'm answering today. So once again, in today's video, I'm testing the Intel RK770 with two CPUs, in this case, the 12600F, the i5-12600F, and of course, the Ryzen 7 7700X. And you might say, well, this makes no sense because the 12600K and the 7700X are entirely different CPUs and the 7700X is faster, so the results will be better. Well, let me explain. In a matter of fact, well, as soon as you go into a GPU bottleneck, into a strict GPU bottleneck, the CPU won't make any difference, maybe it will give you slightly better results in the 1% lows, so slightly higher smoothness, but apart from that, as soon as you have a decent CPU versus a decent CPU, in this case both the 12600K and the 7700X are decent CPUs, the CPU won't matter because once again we are going into a GPU bottleneck. For example, a GPU from this scale of the RK770, let's say RTX 4060 RX 7600 level, any CPU, even the 5600X, would be able to deliver the most FPS this card could give, could deliver. But since we are running into a driver overhead issue, so basically the, the drivers can't handle properly the, the calls in between the CPU, RAM, GPU and so on, a stronger CPU will make the difference. And since we have the 12600K and the 7700X that is clearly faster, it would be interesting if in some games the 12600K was actually delivering better results. Because once again, if the 7700X is faster and is still delivering lower results with the Intel Arc GPU than the 12600K, it means that indeed the Intel Plus Intel combo is working better. We do have some really interesting results. Results, of course, that I'm going to show you. But, but before, before, today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. So, let's go to the results. The first game is Assassin's Creed Mirage, and to my surprise, the game did work better with the Intel i5-12600K, even though the Ryzen 7 7700X is much faster overall. I know these games like Intel CPUs a bit more, but still, I believe the combo of Intel CPU and GPU works better here since the game is Intel sponsored for both CPUs and GPUs. Maybe that's it. With the Intel CPU being 6% faster at 1080p, 5% faster at 1440p and 6% faster at 4K, but also delivering lower 1% lows than the Ryzen 7 7700X at 4K, so interesting. As we move to Plague Tale Requiem, we see the Intel CPU delivering slightly lower 1% lows. And I know this game is extremely GPU-sided, but there were parts where the driver's overhead was so bad that the frame time was all over the place. So I wanted to know if the frame times would be better, or at least if the game would be smoother with the Intel CPU, but sadly, it wasn't. It was the same. Hogwarts Legacy is a CPU-demanding game, and if we're talking about parts like Hogsmeade, even more. But once again, the Intel combo worked slightly better here at 1080p and 1440p, once again delivering the same averages but higher 1% lows, leading to an overall smoother gameplay, of course. At 4K, something went off and the performance actually dropped compared to the Ryzen CPU that, at this resolution, did a bit better. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is another game that heavily depends on the CPU side, at least for high FPS numbers, and one of the games where the Intel GPUs have pretty big driver overhead in some cases, as shown in my previous videos for example. Not huge, of course, but it is there. But here it seems that the results are basically all within the margin of error, I would say, as the benchmark is not exactly equal every single time. Forza Horizon 5 is another title where the ARC GPUs don't fare that well, and we do have a slight driver overhead, especially at 1080p. But yet, the results are all within the margin of error once again, so nothing really interesting to see here. 
In The Last of Us we get the opposite results that we had so far, since the game is very CPU demanding and like CPUs with more cores, so the Ryzen 7 7700X delivers better results as it should. This is expected as the driver's overhead is apparent when you are testing the game even with Ryzen CPUs, so I don't think a stronger Intel CPU would have more FPS here, but instead the same numbers as the AMD one. Still interesting to see a different scenario. Cyberpunk 2077 is another GPU intensive title in most scenarios and as you can see the only thing we can get here is slightly higher 1% lows with the AMD CPU. And that happens since the game is already well optimized for the Intel Arc GPUs and the driver's overhead is minimum. So let's say there wasn't more performance that they could squeeze out of this. Ratchet & Clank on the other hand delivers the most surprising results of all, not only delivering higher averages than the Ryzen CPU, but also much higher 1% lows, delivering a much smoother experience at 1080p and 1440p. This is the first game where we can say that the Intel CPU and GPU combo makes the difference, since I'm almost 100% sure that if I used another GPU, let's say an AMD or Nvidia one, the Ryzen 7 7700X would deliver better results, hands down. So it's a very interesting case scenario that we have here. Alan Wake 2 follows the opposite route though, and even with a slow card such as the RK770, the CPU does make a little difference, with the Ryzen 7 7700X now being the one delivering higher 1% lows at all resolutions, being them more noticeable at 1080p of course. Funny how things can vary. With Avatar we have exactly the same average FPS across the board, but now the Intel CPU delivered slightly higher 1% lows at 1080p, which once again indicates that in situations where the game suffers a lot from poor frame times due to poor optimization on the driver's side, having an Intel combo can deliver slightly better results. And with Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, which is a full ray tracing game, the tables turn. Again. Now it seems that the AMD CPU delivers better performance across the board, with the most noticeable difference being at 1080p and in the 1% lows. So even though the RK770 performs exceptionally well in this title and there is no bottleneck, the 1% lows are still better with the Ryzen 7 7700X. Maybe once again due to a small driver overhead that we have in this game, I don't really know. And with Starfield that we all know as a very CPU intensive title, one that also runs like crap on Intel GPUs, and I mean really, like crap. As you see not even 40 FPS at 1080p and that is due to the massive lack of optimization in this title from both Bethesda and Intel. Still the results are basically within the margin of error here. And the last game is Spider-Man Remastered, and since this game needs a good CPU and RAM to push those extra frames, it is perfectly normal that even with the RK770, the results produced by the Ryzen 7 7700X would get higher or would be higher at 1080p. Although as we go to a GPU bottleneck, the difference is zero, because once again, this is another one of those games where the ARC GPUs run really well. Although as soon as we go to ray tracing and a huge amount of bandwidth is required, things change, a lot. Even with the RK770 being pushed close to its max, we could see the 12600K getting annihilated by the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is expected once again as the CPU slash RAM and GPU have to work much more and even with the supposed GPU bottleneck, if the driver's overhead is big, a better CPU will help quite a lot, and it shows here. And the final charts are showing the averages of all games tested, and as seen the differences are basically null overall. We do have some games where the Intel combo solution is better, like Assassin's Creed Mirage and Ratchet and & Clank, but in others, since we have a huge CPU overhead in terms of drivers, the Ryzen 7 7700X delivers better results. Let's move to the conclusion so I can give you some more insights. And concluding guys, as you saw, well, we do have some interesting results because in most games, let's say in most titles, 
the, um, well, the AMD plus Intel combo is still better. And in some scenarios, let's say like Spider-Man, where the CPU is really, really required to deliver those high FPS numbers, the difference is there, especially when using ray tracing. In that specific scenario, the 7700X is much faster. But in other scenarios, for example, with an Intel sponsored title like Assassin's Creed Mirage, where we have a, a sponsor in terms of CPU and GPU, the combo of Intel plus Intel does have a benefit and Assassin's Creed does run better. Although Assassin's Creed games tend to run better, of course, uh, on Intel CPUs than AMD ones, but the previous titles run really, really well. Or I tested, I tested, for example, Assassin's Creed Valhalla in terms of CPU power and Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well. And the Intel and AMD CPUs were running more or less on par. But it seems that with Assassin's Creed Mirage, since we have a, an Intel sponsorship, the Intel CPUs do run better, especially especially if we are pairing it with an Intel GPU as well. And there's more because games like Ratchet and Clank, I never expected to see such a difference for the 12600K in terms of Ratchet and Clank. I did not test Ratchet and Clank in terms of CPU performance. I sincerely doubt that the 12600K would be able to deliver better results than the 7700X, especially when using only DDR4 in Ratchet and Clank if I was using an AMD GPU or an Nvidia One. So I believe that the difference is really from using an Intel CPU plus Intel GPU. And that's that's those are basically the two games where we have the most difference, Ratchet and Clank and Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, while in others, generally, it is more or less the same or the AMD CPU wins because once again, the AMD CPU is faster here. An interesting point to take is that I sincerely thought, and I repeat, I sincerely thought that using an Intel combo, in this case CPU plus GPU, would actually increase uh, increase the smoothness in some gameplays like Plague Tale Requiem when we're looking at the city, for example, but still I tried those same exact parts and the frame times are still all over the place. In most scenarios it works great, but in some others, when we have lots of, of AI NPCs, well, yeah. The frame times are really messed up and using an Intel CPU does not help at all. Using Intel or AMD CPUs, it's the same. The RK770 just can perform well there because of the drivers. But in some other games, uh, overall, in the overall majority, majority of games, the Intel Arc will work perfectly. I even tried Starfield, as you saw, and on Starfield the game is so broken then use, that using a, an Intel or an AMD CPU makes no difference. The AMD CPU is actually faster because Starfield, well, likes lots of cores. But overall, that's it. Do the Intel GPUs work better with the Intel CPUs? Well, in some games, yes, definitely, in some games. But still, the Intel Arc GPUs have a long way to go. Really, long way. Let's hope for Battle Mage because I'm really, really eager to see what Intel will bring next in terms of GPU power. I'm really eager to see. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the, the testing methodology, what you think about the results. If you were actually surprised with the Ratchet and Clank and Assassin's Creed Mirage results, even so, because even though we have a slower CPU, we have better results with Intel plus Intel combo. And overall, yeah, let me know just what you think about everything in the comment section. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video.